Oh, William, did you actually kill that man? Jacob! Isn't that the one that he was talking about? So you would definitely say Fort Mifflin's haunted. Fort Mifflin's haunted beyond uh, uh, shadow of the devil. Tonight we're here in Philadelphia at Fort Mifflin. This is known as one of the most terrifying places in America. With hundreds of deaths taking place here over hundreds of years, this property is loaded with history and mystery. There may be dead bodies buried somewhere here on the property. There may be secrets left inside of this crumbling old fort that have yet to be discovered. Welcome to the Paranormal Files. All right, folks, here we are in the streets of Philadelphia. Welcome to the Paranormal Files. Um, later in this episode, we're going to be using these costumes as trigger objects at Fort Mifflin, one of the most haunted forts in America, one of the oldest locations we've ever had the privilege of investigating. But right now, before we get into that, we wanted to show you a little bit of our city. So if you don't know, we live here in Philadelphia. And right now we're down at the Independence Hall area where the Declaration of Independence was signed. There's a mass grave of over 2,000 Revolutionary War soldiers right there yonder. But, <laughs> yonder? Yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we're wearing these costumes, and we're gonna we're gonna take you around uh, Independence Hall, and let me just show you, Connor. <laughs> Give me like a declaration quote. We the people. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go. Let's go. So right here is uh, Independence Hall it's supposed to be haunted where Articles of Confederation were signed and written and, and the Declaration and, of and the Declaration of Independence yep. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna see and believe it or not not many people dress up to come down here <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever seen one Go birds. Yeah, the Philadelphia Eagles are playing right now, too, and they're up so we were just watching the game down here and <laughs> And then we come out and we, we're, we're doing this. Yeah. I'm hoping someone wants to take a picture with you. Not me. <laughs> yeah, you. He's got a way cooler costume than me. Yeah, yours looks kind of cheap. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was. Look, this is where you and your friends signed the Declaration of Independence. Hey, look, there I am right there. There's a statue. Oh, yeah, that's you. <laughs> that's you. How did, it, how did it feel when you signed those papers? Oh. Like pen on paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But I, you kind of look like him though. You have like the exact same fit on. Yeah, check it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, although we may look really dumb right now, this building behind me, this is Independence Hall. And this is one of the most famous structures in all of America because this is where the Declaration of Independence was signed back on July 4th, 1776, thus creating the 4th of July, our national holiday. And this is really where the American Revolution Started. begun. Yeah, right here. And that's why tonight when we're at Fort Mifflin, we're gonna be investigating the spirits that died because of this action. But we felt like it was important to show you because, oh, let's take a look over here too. It actually started in this building right over here. Which one, the little one? Yeah, that little guy over there. Wait, which one? <laughs> Oh, thank, thank you. you. This is my everyday attire. Yeah. <laughs> it's this building. People probably think we're like ghosts right now. Uh, they probably think we're idiots. <laughs> we're dumbasses. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I've been saying he looks like John Adams all day. Dude, it's a spitting image, bro. Check this out. <laughs> That's you in your costume right now. <laughs> no. John Adams, yo, yo. I can kind of see it, man. <laughs> John Adams, he's got that hair, man. Yeah. It's the exact style wig he used to go for. Mine's kind of like Liberace. You look like a f***ing matador. Yeah, a matador. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, we made it through security at the Liberty Bell. <laughs> what did they, didn't he say you look like John Adams? Yeah. Yes, I told you, I told you. Ah, there it is. There it is. The Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell. I've never seen it in person. Yeah. Only from the outside. Famous crack. That's quite the crack. <laughs> I always thought it was bigger. 
I thought it was much bigger. Like nope. a huge bell, you know? It's a nice no. bell. It's a nice bell. You know, it kind of makes me wonder what it sounds like. Is it like a... Sounds oh, like a clue. <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually doesn't make much of a sound because of the crack. Ah. Uh, you're right. Big brain, that wig is really <laughs> adding IQ points. Yeah, you got this, this wig's <laughs> holding in this big old brain of mine. I wonder if the Liberty Bell's haunted. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. So many clues. <laughs> it's a clue. I need to find the map. <laughs> there you go, everybody. You saw it. All right, found your father. Go check out G Dub's house. G Dub. Got to see G Dub. So something else interesting you can come see down here is George Washington's house. So this is obviously not original, but down here, if you walk over to this area, you can see the original foundation and basement area where George Washington lived. It's rumored that this property is haunted by a number of different entities. I actually took a ghost tour here with Courtney and they showed me a photo of someone's face that was taken just down here. Yeah, so there's a lot to see down here in this area. There's Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, and George Washington's damn house. Look at it, once again. Got some tarp down. He was right down there living it up. Living the dream. We're gonna cut now to our investigation of Fort Mifflin. That's one of the most infamous forts in America named on so many lists as being one of the most terrifying places in America. And I think we're gonna have a good night there, especially if we bust these bad boys out and Indeed. see if we bring back any memories. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I had a little bell, you know. The British are coming! Why are you talking like that? I don't know. <laughs> Independence Hall. I really feel at peace here. I, I'm, I feel so free. <laughs> I could f***ing... I could do anything right now. I feel so free. I feel free. How fucking free do you feel? So free, baby. <laughs> so goddamn free. Breathe in that free, fresh air. I'm breathing in that Philadelphia freedom. <laughs> Cause I live and breathe that Philadelphia freedom. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. God bless you, you. Well, you. Damn, this hat, I don't, it looks like I'm wearing a cloud. <laughs> the tail on the back. Thing's hitting. Ah, uh, independence. This is what it gets you, freedom to be a dumbass in public. That is true. <laughs> Hi, my name's Greg O'Brien. I'm the paranormal host here at Fort Mifflin. I'd like to welcome you here to the fort. Um, fort Mifflin was your longest active military fort in United States history, laid out by the British in 1771 to protect the city of Philadelphia, which was your largest English-speaking uh, city. And then in uh, 1777, uh, it was manned by uh, patriots. Philadelphia was the capital of the United States, you know, July 4, 1776, Declaration of Independence signed. Uh, so in 1777, you had the Philadelphia Campaign, where the British sailed around down the uh, down the Atlantic. They didn't come up the uh, Delaware because they knew of the fortifications here at the fort uh, around the river. So they came up the Chesapeake and they marched all the way from Elkton, Maryland, all the way over. And uh, they had a battle in Brandywine, the uh, Battle of Brandywine, Chad's Fort. Washington lost that. September 26th, British marched in unopposed to the city of Philadelphia. And at that time, there was 400 men stationed here at that time, which was Fort Mifflin, which was really called Fort Mud at that time. Um, this was an island, and it was, it lives up to its name, as you'll see tonight, that we had a lot of rain, so it gets very muddy here. So you had 400 men um, held off for five weeks. The entire British Navy that was coming up to Delaware to resupply uh, re, uh, uh, William Howe, General William Howe, that uh, was occupying Philadelphia at the time. There was 250 British warships coming up. They had 400 men. They held off for five weeks. Eventually, uh, the British uh, got a little impatient and they pounded the hell out of these guys. Uh, over 1,000 to 1,100 cannibals an hour. And we have our little geese coming in too, so, you know, 
coming in the background. A lot of wildlife here at the fort, you know. So, <laughs> you know, we have everything you can think of right on the river. So, anyhow, uh, these men held off for five weeks. Eventually, the British bombarded the fort from 1,000 to 1,100 cannibals an hour. Um, eventually, the men, uh, they did not surrender. They did not lower the Fort Mifflin flag. Um, the men that were left, there was only 150 men left. You had over 250 casualties of that. Um, they snuck across and rode across the Delaware River over to New Jersey at Fort Mercer. So the fort was basically destroyed by the British in 1777. Of course, they didn't want any Americans reoccupying it. So what was still around, they just not burned it up and destroyed it. All right. Come 1790s, uh, John Adams was president. Philadelphia was still the capital of the United States. So he had the fort rebuilt. And the fort was rebuilt using French help, French officers, French engineers. Um, and it was built during the yellow fever epidemic of Philadelphia. So you had lots of yellow fever death. I mean, there, there was tens of thousands of people that died in, during that time in the, in the Philadelphia and the surrounding areas. So you had yellow fever deaths here at the fort. Now, War of 1812, Philadelphia was not the capital, so the British did not make it up this far. It was still manned, of course. Um, and then Civil War. This became a military prison. It housed Confederate, Union, and civilian prisoners. Um, they were called political prisoners. It became nicknamed as Lincoln's Bastille. Um, conditions were horrific. Men slipped on dirt floors. They were fed rotten meat, stale bread, water that was just draw. They would dump the waste and then draw the drinking water right for the prisoners. Lots of disease, dysentery, and uh, just all kinds of diseases spread. And it spread not only to prisoners, but throughout the garrison, the fort. So you had prisoner dying and you had uh, soldiers and their families dying here at the fort also during that time. Um, that brings us to World War I. This was a munitions depot. Navy Yards just up the river a little bit. Uh, they housed, they used the uh, casemates, bomb proofs, uh, everything for to store weapons. Um, World War II, it was again used as a munitions depot and then they installed anti-aircraft guns here at the fort to defend the Navy Yard. And Korean War was used as a supply depot for the Navy Yard. So again, we had longest active military for United States history. Revolutionary War through the Korean War. Deactivated in 54, deeded to the city in 1962. And we'll wait. All right, so with the longevity of the fort, to me, the fort is very unique in that there's layers of history here, layers of death, layers of hauntings. All right? You had casualties from battles. You had casualties from sickness. We were right on the Delaware River. You have drowning victims. Bodies have washed up on the shores. Bodies have been recovered offshore in the river by the fort. Um, just a few years ago, we had uh, scouts, Boy Scouts here for an Eagle Scout project. And during low tide, they walked down to the river and they actually discovered a, a lower human jawbone. So it was bagged and tagged, but we never heard anything back from the Philadelphia uh, coroner about carbon date or anything like that. So we don't know who, what kind of gender or how old that was, but um, it's still, so we still have uh, people washing up here at the fort. Military fort, you had executions by hanging, firing squad, and before the airport expansion, uh, this area became a popular spot to dump a body. Uh, Philadelphia mob, motorcycle gangs, you needed to dispose a body, it was dumped around here. So that what, to me, is what makes it so unique. You have all this different history and all this different death here at the fort. All right, so if you look behind you, this is what's called bunk room or the enlisted man's um, barracks. Activity in there, you can hear footsteps above you, below, um, going walking right by you. Uh, there's bunks in there, people do sleep in there for, uh, overnight, uh, reenactors, uh, scouts, or uh, paranormal groups that spend the night. Um, and it is very common for them to hear footsteps and then all of a sudden be shaken. Um, and there's no one there. They get shaken awake. Um, and that is very common. 
and uh, a lot of people run out of here when that happens. So that's very common here in the bunk room. Now over on this side, over here, is what is the officer's quarters, all right? And you would have had uh, two families up top and two families on the first floor. And again, since this was a military base, you had women and children, wives and children live here. We have documented deaths of children and women here. Uh, the most, in 1863, Elizabeth Bunker, um, it was during the time when the fort was a military prison, she became sick with gastritis and uh, she ended up dying at the age of 60. That area, we get a lot of children, so hopefully you can get some children in there. People put dolls and stuff around. Uh, be aware, you can have some children here. And again, there's females here. Now, there's a story of the Screaming Lady. Screaming Lady is legit. Um, I've heard the scream probably a half dozen times over 20-some years. It's blood curling. Um, it's well documented. The Army Corps of Engineers is behind us. Um, they've called Philadelphia Police numerous times because of the screams coming from the fort. So we don't know who is causing the screams. Again, you had Elizabeth Bunker that died of gastritis. Um, there was another Elizabeth that did die here, Elizabeth Pratt. Um, she lived here way back when the fort was just rebuilt. She about 1802. Um, she actually had an infant son that was born here at the fort. Uh, unfortunately, he died in uh, July of 1802 of yellow fever. Um, her young daughter died of yellow fever in December of 1802, and Elizabeth then died of uh, yellow fever in February of 1803. Um, so Elizabeth Pratt died of yellow fever. Um, a lot of people have heard the story of that Elizabeth Pratt hung herself because of uh, her daughter ran off an enlisted man, and since she was a daughter of an officer, that's her mother shunned her, and then when the word got back that her daughter died, she went nuts. But that never happened. Elizabeth Pratt never lived in the officer's quarters. Elizabeth Pratt was married to a sergeant, so she lived farther down on the fort. But she never lived over there, and of course she died of yellow fever. She died before the officer's quarters was actually uh, put the second floor on. So she never hung herself. So just want to put that out there because a lot of people come in here and they want to know where's the where the woman hung herself. Never happened. It was written in a, uh, a book haunted Philadelphia and that's where that story was told over until a historian did research and um, found out exactly the story of Elizabeth uh, Pratt, uh, her death certificate and the gravestones and everything, so that's document. Screaming lady, we don't know, it could be Elizabeth Pratt, screaming about her children dying, could be Elizabeth Bunker, screaming about the uh, pain from the gastritis. Um, we have no clue. Um, there is a woman sighted throughout the fort. She's basically in blue. The more she sighted, the more details uh, that are that develop. Um, she's in a period dress that's probably Civil War, so it probably could be Elizabeth Bunker. We don't know. Um, is she the screaming lady? We don't know. But she is sighted very often here at the fort. So uh, hopefully she comes out for you guys tonight too. And uh, hopefully you get the scream. But <laughs> So we don't know who the scream is, so... Um, people just pick up Elizabeth all the time when doing EVPs or, you know, ghost box or anything, they get Elizabeth, so Elizabeth Pratt, Elizabeth Bunker, another Elizabeth, we don't know. Alright, so let's walk on over here to the powder magazine. Now it's going, again, it's going to be a little wet here since we've had a lot of rain. <laughs> it takes a while to drain. Yeah, and this is Mud Island, and it lives up to its thing. <laughs> you were Damn. strong too, son. I know. Yeah, you're going to have Jesus. some wet feet. All right, so this is the entrance to the powder magazine, okay? So, the powder magazine was built, of course, to store your gunpowder. All right. Now, during the siege of the Battle of 1777, this area was just earth and log. When the British were building in the early 1700s, 1771 to 1773, 
they basically went over budget, ran out of money. So just the 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 west and uh, the east wall and the front there have the granite stone, and then they ran out of money. So when the Americans got the fort, uh, they had good old Ben Franklin put a fundraiser together to get some money for the fort, and they re. Uh, reinforced it with just earthen logs. So this side would have been all earthen logs and when you walked in, that's all brick. That would have just been all earthen logs. Um, the engine, the British engineer was on the British warship, so he knew the weakness of the fort. So when they could, they had two British warships sail up right on the channel over here. And it was so close that the British Marines up in the riggings were shooting down and throwing their primitive grenades down right on the guys in the fort here. Huh. So when the, when the men saw the f ships coming, of course, they rushed to defend, and then they just, you know, the ships opened up, and so a lot of casualties were done in this whole area so over here. So how far over is the, like, river from here? The river's right over here, but again, this would have been an island. Yeah. So you have the moat, and then on right, you know, probably uh, 20 feet, you would have had the river. So the river went all the way around this place. So it's very close. It was very <laughs> close. And That's then, crazy. Plus then they put land batteries up yeah. and then they, they, they had uh, barges with cannons. They were, they just, you know, these guys were out, man, they were, they started with like 16 can, cannons only here. And, you know, these, some of those British warships had 40 cannons on them, and so they were outmanned. Very big out, outnumbered. <laughs> outnumbered big time. Yeah. Uh, the men were give, actually given uh, rations of rum to retrieve cannonballs so they could shoot it back at the British because we ran out of cannonballs. So they will give you some rum. Give that you way. some get, rum. Got a little bit of a prize if you yeah. go and get Not it. Not a bad trade. <laughs> Not a bad trade, but eventually you get a few too many shots of rum. They tried to catch the cannonballs and not retrieve them, and that didn't work out too well. <laughs> so it's, it's well documented, guys are just getting their heads blown off and blown in that just running i got it Poof. so really oh yeah they actually did that they, like actually they would try that. to catch cannon they got so drunk yeah they were you know whatever you know they you know that's <laughs> gotta that's wild yeah i mean eventually there wasn't that many guys that would go get the cannon oh, yeah. you know so <laughs> you were getting more drinks oh, yeah. <laughs> you see that they got drinks but then they weren't coming back they were, like, yeah, no yeah, uh, I'm good. Cut me know, off, bartender. It's like, yeah, oh, damn, he's got it. Poof, oh, no, I got that one now. <laughs> All right. So anyhow, so there's a lot of death in this whole area. I mean, the whole fort, but um, in this area, you get a lot of shadow figures. Uh, powder magazines, uh, very active. And um, so it could be a reason why when they built the powder magazine, there's a lot of activity over here. All right. So in we go. <laughs>
past this wall. So there could be something back there. We don't know. It would just be nice to get a grant to get some uh, earth penetrating radar so we can see if there's a void back there. But they pick it up all the time. Um, again, you get some weird light anomalies in there. Some people think there's a portal. Um, don't know. Um, it's, uh, it's a neat little place. Uh, like I say, if you sit, sometimes you sit with your back to the wall, you might see a shadow figure walking back and forth in the front. If you sit looking at the wall, you might see some weird lights. Okay. So this is your powder magazine. Alright? Oh. Cool it's room. It's eerie. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Feels like a catacomb almost. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how it's double wall, so the air flows around. Oh, no, there you go. Yeah, that's how it's engineered. Back to the mud. Oh, great. My feet were just drying off. <laughs> Got all this back here, yeah. So there could be bodies there. Could be something back there. There's got to be something. You know why? There should be something back there. It's a very good question. Yep. Be nice to find out eventually. Uh, there's what's called the West Sally Port. When you entered, that was the East Sally Port. Uh, these would have been uh, openings for the guards. So each side there would have been guard station, probably guys that were on guard duty during the day, maybe guards that guard duty at night, and they would go out and have their own back and forth. Uh, the main gate is, uh, we'll go by and show you that the other, uh, later on, and we'll go by the main gate, but uh, this is where your guard stayed. So we can go in, this area is floods a lot because the moat's right outside the door and when we get some, a lot of rain and I tied it backs up, so. You can get in here. You can stand on that and see what you guys can do. Nice. Alright, so again, this is where you had the guards. You would have had the bunks, the guards stayed in there, they had the room, fireplace. Um, these are very, some of my favorite spots back in here. A lot of activity. Uh, you can be in here and you might see some shadow figures going back and forth in the hallway here. Um, again, all kinds of activity in here. Um, I was sitting on that bunk in the back, on the bottom bunk, and uh, uh, there was a uh, shadow figures going in the hallway outside. I told them to come in. Uh, of course, equipment goes on and off. And eventually, I'm sitting on the bottom, and I felt something climb over me to get to the top bunk. And then eventually, it climbed back down over me to get off. Um, so that, that's what my experience is in here. And then the other uh, room was in investigating, and we had a group in there, and it was a female. And she's sitting there, and she's saying, oh, somebody's playing with my hair. My hair. And eventually, she screamed and ran out. And she was like, well, what happened? She goes, something grabbed my arm. So I had a recorder going and I played it back. And right before she screamed, you hear a voice that says, that it's going to grab her arm. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah. That's probably right. so eerie. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other round too. We just, like, last, last week we had a, a whole weekend of World War II reenactors were here the whole weekend. So. Really? Yeah. We do, you know, a lot of reenactors come here. We do a lot of activities here. Blacksmith building. So, again, uh, we used to have a groundskeeper, Wayne, that was here 24 7, and, you know, have to close up the doors, everything up at night because we do have a lot of uh, wildlife here deer, fox. Um, groundhogs, birds. You know, uh, birds, geese, yeah, um, and, and beavers, Get had, had angry beavers here. So it closed up every night. So in the mornings, this back door would be wide open. You know, I think nothing of it. Eventually, you know, every morning, the door would be open. He closed at night, be open in the morning. 
one morning it was ripped off the hinges. It was just hanging inside of the uh, building. Alright, so he put it back on the hinges, fixed it up on the back. It got ripped off again, put it back up. Eventually it was completely ripped off the whole side of the building and thrown up on the hill. Now for years we had that just put the, put it to the side. We just had plywood up there and we would screw the plywood or nail the plywood and that would still get ripped off. So we just would prop the plywood up now and let it go if decides. But just recently it was decided, well, let's get the fixed the bit the door. The hinges were all bent. It, it was nailed shut. The nails were all bent. It was ripped off at such a great force and we just had it as a display. But it was decided we're going to get it fixed, put it up, and we'll see what happens. So it was it's sitting right out the the back now and it's getting ready to be put back up. So we'll see what happens with that. So um, the story is that the blacksmith here, Jacob, um, uh, was told that he had to uh, close the doors and windows because in the middle of the building, uh, Fort here is the commandant's house or the citadel or the commandant or the commander. Um, it's called commandant because this was mostly under naval jurisdiction, just except when it was a uh, military prison and was under the uh, U.S. Uh, Army. Um, so the commandant. So I guess he would tell that uh, he had to close everything up. I guess when the kids would take a nap or whatever. Um, eventually he, he would get open the back door, get caught, get reprimanded. So that's the story we got about why the door got ripped off. So again, we're gonna we'll see uh, what happens when we put that door back. See if anything happens again. Um, I was. I, I liked it just as it was, you know, sitting there with the, you could show the hinges bent, the nails that were bent and everything. It was yeah. just nice evidence that verified the story, but um, it wasn't my decision. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going back up. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that Jacob is the blacksmith that's been identified as the blacksmith in this area. Okay, so you can get, um, get some good, uh, Basically, a lot of it is residual, I think, and here you can get footsteps going back. I got, like I say, I got an EVP of the billows moving. Um, um, but yeah, I used to have tools hanging up, uh, and the tools, they wouldn't just swing. They would go in, like one or two would go in a tight circle, just like this. Then go back and forth. So you go back and forth, you think maybe to win, but when they're going like this, and it's only like one or two, that's not, that's, not, that's not win. That's not win. So uh, we used to have a lot more hanging up, um, but uh, we put some away um, just because, uh, um, you know, uh, some uh, things were getting a little abused, so we put some stuff away. So, so this is your blacksmith building. So Jacob, you see if you can get Jacob or uh, a response or anything with him. Right, this building is the artillery shed. Now, when, when I talked about Elizabeth uh, Pratt, when she was uh, she was married to a uh, um, sergeant, she would have lived back in this area way back before they built the artillery shed. Um, again, this um, housed wagons and our mobile artillery, any cannons they can bring out to move around. Um, right now it's used as storage for original pieces, doors, um, shutters, old bunk beds, anything original that is in disrepair. Spirit Airline, more spirits coming in. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit's coming and the spirit's going. <laughs> So we store everything back here so hopefully eventually we can get some grants and get stuff uh, fixed up. Um, so you get a lot of residual activity in here. Uh, things being moved around, a lot of banging. Um, we do candlelight ghost tours every year in October and uh, we there I recommend if you're in the area come out for them because a lot we do we just go around and talk about the what the happenings here at the fort and it gets very active and had one group with me and uh, they took a picture, I told 
you know, take some pictures, you know, and took a picture right up there and she took a series of picture and, uh, pictures and the one picture, the frame, was a gentleman sitting up there. You could actually see his figure sitting on a chair, sitting up there. And then of course there wasn't anybody up there. Um, and we've had uh, people captured come and see children sitting up there, um, which is common. The building in the middle over here, that's what the commanders or the commandants, and he had children and they would like to play around here. Again, getting back to Wayne, uh, one time he had a lot of planes tonight. Yeah, right now um, they're going, you know, you got your Friday night, everybody coming in, business and special. It does die down if you plan on coming, they die down as the night gets um, later and after midnight till about four or five o'clock, it's pretty much quiet as could be. So, um, you know, just, you know, when you come here, make sure you tag your audio. <laughs> All right, so Wayne, uh, they were, he was, he had a brand new person work with him, and they were doing work here in this area. And uh, the next day, the the new new person uh, doesn't show up for work. Wayne calls him up and go, why, why, what, what happened? Why aren't you here at the fort working? And he's like, well, didn't you hear all those children running around, making all that noise while we were down by the artillery shed? And Wayne's like, yeah, well, that's normal. So the guy never came back. <laughs> So um, we do get a lot of children here. I've seen two, uh, I, th I call them brother and sister, they're both blonde hair. Um, they like running around here. Um, again, during a ghost tour, uh, candlelight ghost tour, I came in and I saw the kids running around. I didn't say anything. And um, there was two young boys in the group. And I come over and I, you know, I say, uh, anybody have any questions? You know, there's no such thing as a stupid question unless you want to know why they built a fort so close to the airport. Um, we do get asked that, um, but he uh, raises his hand. He goes, "Did any children die here at the fort?" And I said, "Yes, it's documented. We did have children here. It's military fort diseases, accidents, you know, drownings. Um, so children did die here at the fort." Now I knew what the answer was going to be, but I asked him. I said, "Why do you ask that?" And he's like, "Well, when we came in, I saw two little kids running around." And I said, "Well, welcome to Fort Mifflin." So. Um, <laughs> They are very visible. Like I say, blonde hair. The little boy's got like a Dutch boy haircut. Girl's got nice curls in there. She wears a little bonnet. So uh, they're around. We get uh, we have dog ghosts, cat ghosts. So uh, residual, intelligent, you name it, it's here. All right. So so your artillery shit. So. Now again, when I said about in World War II, they had, they put anti-aircraft guns here at the fort. Um, a few years ago, we were doing some uh, clearing in the woods in the back there, and uh, we discovered two of the. Here's one of them. They were just dumped back at. Yeah, that's the that's one of the anti-aircraft gun barrels. So we found two of them. Um, so they were just thrown in the back in the woods there, and we just reclaimed them here. So yeah, they, this this again, they would have been, they were all put around the fort here to defend the navy yard. Old bunk beds, original bunk beds from the 1800s, shutters, whatever is original, we put back in here just for safekeepings. And so hopefully, eventually, we can get everything redone. Well, we appreciate everybody that comes here. Money goes to keep this place going. You guys can go in it later on. Uh, you got these stairs, they go up, and right up there there's a railing. And you go down those stairs, and that's Casemate 11. And that was just rediscovered, I think it was only 16 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. Again, that was Wayne, our groundskeeper. Uh, his foot went through the hole. We knew it was here. We didn't know exactly where it was because there's, uh, there was references to year, uh, you know, from the historical that it was here. Um, what happened was this mound here is called the Torpedo Magazine. Um, I take you in there, but there's some water in the front, so 
you're not proper footwear, so we won't go through that big puddle. But it's like it's like the tor uh, powder magazine. You zigzag going in, and there's an opening. It's a well. They dug a channel all, all the way out to the Delaware River, and this was the last structure built here in the 1870s. And uh, theory is they'd have primitive uh, torpedo, you know, lighter fuse, drop them down, and shoot them out into the river to hit any kind of boat. So it was a crapshoot if it was going to hit anything. And there was a possibility that it could turn around and come right back at you. So they realized that it was, in, you know, that it, it wasn't, it wasn't practical. So it was never used as a torpedo magazine. It got used as door munitions during World War One and One and Two. But yeah, that's a great place. You go up in there. The two of you go in there. That uh, you know, um, that was Civil War. That became solitary confinement. It originally was the powder magazine uh, for the uh, fort in the 1700s. But that became uh, solitary confinement during the Civil War. Now, the most famous prisoner, of course, is William Howe, was housed there. We know of William Howe and Bernard Devlin. We know that because they wrote their names in there. Uh, when, when it was reopened, it was like an Egyptian tomb. It was just pristine, you know. But once the air got into it, like, you know, like I say, they, they wrote their names on it. There was graffiti all over it. The moisture got in and destroyed. You could still make them out here and there, but it pretty much destroyed everything. But we have everything documented. Um, they found their potty chambers and their eating utensils and everything in there. Um, and wasn't one of them hung here? Yeah, William Hell. William Hell was a Union prisoner, um, a Union soldier. He was actually a war hero in Battle of Fredericksburg. He actually uh, picked up the American flag that was dropped. So he was actually a hero. Um, but then he got sick. Um, was, was supposed to report to a field hospital in Washington, D.C. But if you know anything about the Civil War, about the field hospitals back then, well, most of your death <laughs> was by when you went into the hospital because there was no sanitary. The more blood the doctors had on them, the more, you know, they, I mean, they just cut, cutting people open, cutting limbs off and everything and go to the next one. So people were more dying of infection than uh, actual uh, from their wounds. So he decided he was going to walk all the way to his house up in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. So he walked from Fredericksburg, Virginia to his house up in Bucks County. Well, months go by and there's no word from William Howe, so uh, Lincoln sends some marshals up. Um, they arrived during the middle of the night. They don't identify themselves. They bang on the doors demanding William Howe. Um, they won't identify themselves. So a shot rang out and one of the marshals is killed. Now who did the shooting? No one really knows, but William Alcos was accused. It's like every Friday. Yeah, Friday night it will be like this till for a few a couple hours and then it will die down. Jesus. You know, coming in. Coming in, everybody, the businessmen specials coming in oh, on the yeah. weekend. But so he was accused. He was accused. He was rounded up and he was thrown in uh, Casemate 5, which we're going later on, which with the other uh, Union prisoners. Eventually, there's an escaped attempt out of Casemate 5. They tried digging a tunnel out. William Hell was accused as a ringleader, that, and that's why he was thrown over there in uh, Casemate 11 in solitary. He was taken from here at Fort Mifflin, he was taken over to Eastern State Penitentiary, where he was housed, and then tried and found guilty of murder and desertion. Then they brought him back here and they hung him, all right? So he was a public execution. They sold tickets. They brought his family, they brought his whole unit. They, it was standing room only. So that was the only public execution here. And there were other firing squads and, and hanging here at the fort. So he wasn't the only execution here at the fort. Some people say he was the only, no, he was a public execution, so um, some people, he does still haunt here. Um, people uh, pick up on him. Um, all our experiences with him have been nice. All of, everybody that here is a regular has experience with the spirits. They know our names, they greet us, they yell at us, they, you know, they know us. Yeah. You know, you, the more you go, you know, you interact, they, the more they become familiar with you. So, um, we have nothing negative, demonic here. Uh, 
we like to keep it that way. That's what we tell people, please don't provoke. You know, respect the dead, respect these guys. Um, so, uh, um, you know. So, yeah, well, we have one, uh, one tour guide, Mary. Uh, um, she was going down the stairs and she tripped. Well, she was going down the stairs before and she felt somebody escort her down, grab her elbow and help her down. One time she was going down, she actually tripped and she was falling and somebody caught her. So, uh, she, so we think that would have been William Howe. Uh, so, um, he's, he's been, uh, he seems good with us. Now those people that come up. All right, well, I tell you, we're right on the Delaware River. So if you look behind you, you can see a tanker going up the river. <laughs> Planes, trains. Planes, trains, and ships. Yeah. <laughs> so just imagine how close you see that boat. That's where like warships were coming up to bomb. Oh place. yeah, well, that's why I was like, you want to walk over? We can go over, you can yeah. look at the river here. Yeah, it was. that's why I was put here. It's right, the channel runs right in front of the port. But yeah, so you could see, that's the channel right there. So, all the boats had to go past here. And you know, there's a lot of good things. But that's what, another thing is, you can come out, watch the boats, watch the airplanes, <laughs> hang out with the history, hang out with wildlife. Yeah. There's the city of Philadelphia. There's downtown Philly over there, yes. So, what, what, what always amazes me how quiet they are. You know, those tankers. Uh, how big of a boat it is. Yep. Silently just lurking in the water. Yes. <laughs> well, the only reason I, you knew it was coming, I saw the lights. Yeah, you know, right. You don't hear the, the motor. They are just so quiet. So this is Commandant, Commander's house. Uh, he would have lived here with his family. Uh, these are up so it doesn't give you a good view. But, hey, that's a four-sided fireplace, three-sided. Fancy. Yeah, and this would have been, over here would have been the kitchen one. There would have been a stove actually inside of that. Um, this had two, two floors on it. Unfortunately in 1980, there was a fire in here. So um, it burned this place down, so they put the roof back on, but if you look, you can see where the second floor was, see how the beams, the joists oh, yeah. were, so the second floor would have been up there, that's where the servants lived, okay? So you can be in here and you can hear footsteps above you, even when there's no second floor. Um, you get a lot of shadow activity in here, uh, banging on door, windows. Um, stones, bricks being moved around in here. So uh, it's very neat in there. Uh, you know, if when you're in here, if you want to get a better view, you can you know put them down so you can get better. So he's been actually captured by people. They put laser grids out. They've seen his uh, figure in here. Um, so again, it, we were always naval, except for with the Civil War time. So that's why it was called the Commandant. It was the Commandant. We were always under naval jurisdiction. Uh, World War One, Two, in Korea, you had Marines that were actually stationed here, guarding the munitions and everything. Uh, behind us is the Army Corps of Engineers, and there's a National Guard and Army Reserve unit. That was all part of Fort Mifflin back then. So the barracks that they use now for the uh, Army Reserve and everything would have been barracks for the uh, Marines that were here. You, then you would have had the Marines right, you know, stayed here in the, all part of the fort to guard it. What was that? That whistling noise. Yeah. What is uh, that? There, you do get whistling in here. I mean, that was like... Uh, it might just be... Could have been... Could have been... Air. I mean, I haven't heard that the entire time we've been sitting doing this. Especially with those damn airplanes drowning all the noise out. <laughs>
But it sounded like. Yeah, yeah that's exactly that, what it sounded like. Exactly what it was. Um, we do get. <laughs> Did you hear it again? Yeah. We do get whistling here. And then it stopped. Wait, it's just sit for a second. I'm excited to bring out some tools. So it straight up just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> wow! I thought that was for sure something that. Yeah, that was. And there's like no wind. There's no like wind. Nothing out tonight. No. It's very still. Well, that was interesting. That was straight up full on whistling. Yeah. Like, loud, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, the gallows for Hal would have been in this area. They hung the guys in the in, in, inside. They executed by a fire squad outside. So, this is the armory, old armory. Um, and then became a jail cell, um, and then became a storage unit. Uh, not a lot in here. Um, you can get some EVPs in here. Um, I was in there with Dustin Perry, Perry one time, and we picked up some good EVPs in here. But uh, not, I, I, I never, no figures or anything like that. So um, it's a good place to just take a break. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, get those feet dry. <laughs> That'd be nice. So we'll go in there. We're gonna go into the casemates. And when this was rebuilt by John Adams, these were bomb shelters and storage for um, the troops. Uh, again, during the Civil War, this became a military prison. Um, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Lincoln locked up tens of thousands of civilians throughout the country, military installations for uh, opposing the war. Here's your main gate. So again, this would have been an island. Everything had to come through here. Um, this is the original mess hall. Um, this is where they had their dinners, uh, they ate. This was a chapel. Um, there's br brick fired, uh, you know, fired uh, ovens back there um, that would cook their dinners, their breads and everything. Reenactors still can use them too. They make, they can make some good pizzas with them. Um, they, we put a bar back there that's built, that was hand built by uh, reclaimed uh, uh, lumber. Uh, get a lot of stuff washed up on the river, so uh, we had a gentleman that made that bar back there. Um, these openings you see behind you, they are air ventilation, they are not gun ports. Again, this, this would have been used again for, uh, uh, for bombardments. Um, we do have weddings here, people do. We have wedding ceremonies here. Um, so uh, this becomes a nice bar area for people with their weddings. Um, we get you get some good activity in here. Uh, full full bodies, shadow figures um, could be in here. So this is what do we call the bake oven, but it's the old mess hall. Okay. Now we're going to go down the casemates again. These would have been the bomb shelters and um, and then during the Civil War, these all became the prison cells. 
Alright, watch your step, watch your head. We'll go in here, this is casemate one. This was originally for the uh, regular soldiers under uh, in the 1790s, early 1800s for a, a bomb shelter. This is, during the Civil War, this is where the Confederates were held. Now, there would have been no beds. There was dirt floors. There was what they called a half barrel that would have been placed in the back of the back wall for the waste. The guys basically slept on the ground in their own waste. Um, they were the blankets would have been the, they, in the winter. They were giving them one that ones that the rats or mice chewed through with the holes. Um, the, the food would have been stale meat, rotten, you know, just bad, disgusting. Um, somebody's walking. Yeah. Did you hear that? I've been hearing it. <laughs> All right. So that's kind of when they walk up and down the hallways here. Um, they like when you talk about the history. It seems to stir them up. But uh, um, they would uh, empty the uh, waste barrel maybe once every two weeks, and then they dump it, and then they would hear. Uh, then they would draw their drinking water right, right there. Um, so that I think that could be a drip. But uh, you had lots of disease, and again, it wasn't just the prisoners. It was the uh, it spread everywhere to guards and their families. Um, and basically, uh, they were just locked up in here. It's mostly from the Battle of Gettysburg, the Confederates. Um, there were a couple of uh, battles, uh, Confederate ships that were captured and their crew was brought here. And of course, uh, there were some Confederate uh, spies that were caught and they brought them in here. So they were all housed in here. Um, again, you get footsteps, you get, uh, you can hear moans, screams, uh, shadow figures, full bodies. Um, it all happens all through the casemates here. Now we're gonna go down the casemates and there's gonna be three small casemates, two, three, and four. They were initially used for storage, but Civil War, when this was a military prison, it became the political prisoners and they would, they would have like 45 men in each of the small ones. So we'll head on down. Yeah, it's just the history here is just incredible and just the layers of it. Amazing. Alright, so here's your small ones, two, three, and four. Alright, political prisoners, up to 45 men in each of these small ones. Again, sleeping on dirt floors. Um, there was no fireplaces in these small ones because they were used for storage. Uh, at least they had the decency to put coal stoves in the back to keep the guys warm. Alright, uh, so this is case made five. Now this is where William Howe was initially kept with the rest of the Union prisoners. So, um, again, the uh, barrel waste bucket would have been in the back here. So this is where uh, they attempted to escape by tunneling out. So I'd imagine they'd uh, dig and then they'd cover up the hole with the barrel if they heard the guards coming down the hallway. Um, but once they, they, they were waiting for them on the other side. So they all got caught. And uh, Again, why uh, Hal was accused as the ringleader, so that's why he was thrown over in solitary. Um, don't know exactly why Bernard Devlin was housed over there, um, but uh, his name was on there, so uh, don't know. Are these just kind of ventilation? These are just all ventilation holes, yeah. So even during the day, it's dark in here because you don't get a lot of light, and. Uh, um, when it rains, it drips in, and 
Um, you know, there's documentation, the prisoners that would write, you know, how inhumane it was. Again, it's dirt floors, there would have been no beds. Uh, these were Eagle Scout projects to make these beds. Uh, these would have been used, you know. Um, after they rebuilt it in the 1790s and, you know, you know, the, the, before the Civil War and afterwards, you know. But uh, when the prisoners here, there wasn't any bunks here. So again, they just slept on the ground, basically in their own waste. Now again, you're in here, you can hear footsteps going up and down the hallways, moans, screams. Um, you know, people are just so sick. I mean, the, the description, the guys writing, political prisoners. Uh, uh, there, was a, there was a group of 43 from upstate Pennsylvania, on fish, called the Fishing Creek Confederacy or Conspiracy. It was a group of, uh, they were opposed to Lincoln, they were opposed to the war, um, they refused to report to the draft. Uh, Lincoln sent troops up to uh, force the draft. Um, on patrol, one of the uh, Union uh, patrols uh, was ambushed and that was an officer killed. So he sent more troops up, they rounded up a bunch of uh, civilians. They sent 43 of them down here and these guys were just regular citizens. Again, they were posted to war. They were uh, farmers, butchers, um, just normal guys. They were incarcerated in here. Some of them like 70 some years old. And then there was another group from uh, Clearfield, Pennsylvania, uh, 40. And uh, same thing, they opposed Lincoln, they opposed the war, and uh, they were thrown in here. And plus you had 60 of the Molly Maguires. If you know about the Molly Maguires, that was the Irish miners that uprooted. So they sent 60 of them in here. So again, you would have had roughly about 45 each of those little small cells. So you had, uh, you had a nice, you know, Comfy, yeah, really comfy. You need a lot of body heat, I guess. Uh, so they were all thrown in there. Now there is a spirit that identifies in here as he calls himself the judge. Now the judge does use foul language. He drops the f bomb. He calls women to the horrors. Um, from Clearfield, there was a sitting judge that was imprisoned in here. Prison Judge Jacob Wilhelm. Um, he was accused of being an anti-Lincoln, even though he had two sons that were in the Union Army, and he uh, actually paid for, at that time, people could pay if they got drafted, if they paid, they didn't have to serve. He would pay people, pay to have people that, you know, take care of the, you know, basically you bribed them so they didn't have to go in. Um, so he got accused of being anti-Lincoln, and, and his sons were ordered to arrest him. So they arrested him and then he was thrown in here. Now the judge didn't die here, he, but he was so sick when he left, he died shortly after and he actually shunned the place. Um, there's a lot of got, men got did die here, um, the, the, the letters the, that were written and the newspapers were keeping an eye on the, the, the wives of the political prisoners camped out outside the fort to see their husbands, they were denied that. Um, so they were, uh, some of them served a few months, some of them served up to two years here. And uh, there was a lot of death. So again, that, that would have been Elizabeth Bunker at the time frame when uh, she died in 1863 uh, when this was a military prison. So um, you have the judge, uh, like again, he had that. I don't, I'm trying to figure out if it's the judge that identifies himself as actually Jacob Wilhelm or just a, a, a spirit that is the alpha spirit that just says he's the judge. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can understand the judge being, you know, here he is a sitting judge. I mean, just a uh, man, I mean, you know, I mean, that didn't do anything wrong in his life and he's thrown in this hellhole. And so I can imagine him being pissed off, but, 100%. yeah, but the, the, the spirit that identifies the judge, he has a deep voice, and again, it's just, he, he greets me, it's F.U. Greg or Greg F.U., <laughs> and uh, he's gotten into my face, he's really, he, I, him and I, I call it a love-hate relationship, so I'm trying to figure out what the hell he has against me and everything, so, uh, um, you know, so I don't, I'm, I'm just really want to know if that, if he is Jacob Wilhelm or just some alpha male that wants to be called the judge. So, um, 
but yeah, uh, some people consider this the most haunted spot in the fort. Um, in this room? Yeah. Um, there is a spirit that there's blondes here. Some spirit likes blonde females. He likes to stroke their hair, um, touch them. Um, it's happened a lot. I've had my, with the mechanical light tours, I'll bring in, do it, be in here, we're talking, and if there's any blondes in here, they, they'll scream. He's, I had one standing right next to me, and she had like a, uh, this jacket that uh, made, you know, it was like crinkly, and standing, and all of a sudden you hear the jacket go, and she's like, ah, something just grabbed me. So, uh, it happens, um, you know, so, you never know what you're going to expect. Shadow figures, full bodies, I've seen full body, uh, um, just regular people, regular clothing, you know, could be drowning victims, who knows. I've seen full bodies, revolutionary war soldiers, I've seen full body civil war soldiers. I was walking out the gate over there and I watched a civil war soldier walk in front of me going towards the hospital building and explicit detail and in, in, in his stripe was a red V so it was a private and it was red so we have civil war reenactment here usually around the time of uh, when the prisoners from Gettysburg were over uh, usually in July I think this year it's uh, a different time but I asked the reenactors, you know, none of them had a red stripe. Their private stripes were all just, you know, different color, white or yellow or something. They said, you know, what did, why, why would a, 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 a Union soldier have a red V? And they say, well, that would have been artillery. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. This, they would have been, you know, there was a prison, but you would have still had your artillery units stationed here, you know. So that made a lot of sense. So you would definitely say Fort Mifflin is haunted? Fort Mifflin's haunted beyond uh, a shadow of a doubt. I mean, we're always ranked in the top 10. It's, we're always on everybody's to do, you know, do list to get here. We, you know, and it's haunted as can be. Um, you know, I mean, we've had plenty of skeptics that come in here and they leave the believers. So um, hopefully uh, they cooperate with you guys tonight and uh, get and, and communicate with you guys. I really hope so. I think they will. Yeah, this thing started out pretty good, so we'll see. <laughs> okay, buddy, you ready? I am ready. Okay, let's cut to the investigation now. All right, everybody, so we've done our tour. Uh, this place is just, like we said before, absolutely loaded with history. It's kind of insane how many different things in how many different eras have occurred here. Not only do you have the soldiers that died during that crucial battle that saved America. Um, but you have the deaths of Civil War soldiers, you have yellow fever deaths, you have executions of prisoners that took place here. You have it all, really. But it's just Connor and I now. We have the entire fort to ourselves. Oh yeah, baby. Probably barely see that because it's yeah, so dark. Honestly. <laughs> As you know, we give away a gift bag in every episode of the Paranormal Files. We love doing it for you guys online. So all you have to do to enter this week is hit the like button. Make sure you thumbs up the video and comment a ghost story of yours. Now, I'm going to be personally going through and reading all of your comments. I'm going to respond to a bunch of people. And if you have a ghost story that you'd like us to come check out, maybe you live in a haunted house or you work in a haunted property, let us know in the comments because we're looking for cases to take on. Home cases, house calls, if you want to call it that. But I'm going to give you all 10 seconds to like and comment now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, I want to state, by the way, thanks to everybody for liking and commenting. So Connor and I have some great... Um, trigger objects that we've we've purchased just for this <laughs> Jesus. Can, these airplanes man it's like every like 30 40 seconds <laughs> um but connor and i have uh we've purchased some very interesting trigger objects to use tonight we have powdered wigs, revolutionary war costumes, pistols. We've got some royalty free music that we're gonna be playing and using here. And I'm really excited. This is the first episode that we've actually filmed in Philadelphia since we moved here. 
and it's at one of the most historic places in the entire country. So, Connor? I got my Civil War Union outfit on too because, like we said, this, uh, this fort in general has been active since the Revolutionary War, Civil War, Korean War, World War II, World War I. Uh, this is actually the longest active military base in the United States. And so we kind of get to uh, take out all of the trigger objects that we have gotten for previous investigations as well. We are very excited about this. Yeah, honestly, that Civil War coat with your Philly hoodie kind of snazzy. It kind of looks good. It kind of looks snazzy. like some high fashion, dude. I mean, look at him go. He's kind of stepping out. Shit. Holy shit. That is what I call I'm high fashion, you. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. <laughs> We're gonna get all of our stuff set up. We're first gonna go head to the house where we were earlier hearing those whistling noises. We're gonna do some alone sessions and then we have some really interesting experiments planned for tonight, so. It is very, very yeah, cold Yeah, and it's cold as hell today. out. You know, it's like 28 degrees, so. This isn't just high fashion, it's also functional. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's <laughs> wearing it. But uh, yeah, let's do this guys, let's go. All right, let's hop right into it. Fort Mifflin, baby. All right, so we just set. Oh, oh! And the mag light too. We just set up all the cameras in here, and the REM pod is going crazy. And the flashlight just came on. Can you step away from this area that we're in right now? Yeah, just a little bit farther, please. Maybe if you could step to that corner over there. Over in the kitchen. Oh, somebody just walked over here. That's a proximity meter. Temperature change. This is a proximity meter that shows, yeah, you see how it's blue? That green on that side showed that somebody walked right up to the meter from over there. And they're walking up over there too. All right, if you're here, feel free to show us that you're here somehow. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Can you turn that flashlight back off? If you see that white light, step away from that light, please. Thank you. Can you step away from this area and let us talk? No, you, you seem to be coming towards our voices. Well, we in, wanted to introduce ourselves. My name's Connor. And my name is Colin. We're just here to talk to you tonight. I know that you were living in this building during the, the Revolutionary War, and we just want to speak to you. I gotta reset the device second time now. Someone's here again. We're friendly. We're American. We're here because of you guys. Exactly. We wanted to be here to say thank you for all you sacrificed for us. If you're here with us, feel free to walk up. You see any of these lanterns or lights? You can go up and touch them. And, oh, right there. Yeah, and it'll let us know that you're here. Can you turn that off again, walk away? Get out of here. 
Maybe it thinks we're soldiers. This is the captain's area, so this is like a very private area. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask, is this a captain speaking to us? There's an airport. Do you ever hear a uh, airplane going over or like an abnormally loud? Hear you. <sighs> An abnormally loud noise, it's probably going to be an airplane. You just said, if you ever hear yeah. that. We would love to hear you make some sort of a noise in here for us, or move something, or even tell us your name. We heard some whistling earlier coming from this building. If that was you, can you do that sound again? It's so f***ing quiet in here. I know. Oh! Free! Free? <laughs> okay. Exact time that the, uh, REM pod went off and free. That's like the entire point of the American Revolution is freedom. You ever look at the word free? Oh, and somebody just walked up over there. You ever look at the word free and think that's, that can't be how you spell it. <laughs> that just doesn't look right. F R E E. You know, I've never thought of that, <laughs> but that's, that is an interesting, interesting thought. Somebody just, dude. So Someone we walked that, up over that, here. And then they came up. Oh, I kind of feel uh, a chill right here. Did you just walk up here? No, I won't. No, I won't. Are you not allowed to walk over here? Or maybe they won't because this is a newer structure. The wood wasn't here. They yeah. won't walk up here. But that makes sense because they're coming up to the edge. With that proximity meter. Oh! We want you to know you're allowed to come stand here with us. I feel uh, uneasy I here. I feel weird all of a sudden. Yeah. Dude. Like this. It, it feels heavier all of a sudden. Oh, like yeah. I'm, I'm actually cold under this big fake for Jack. <laughs> not a real mink. People said, this is not real fur. This is, a this is forever 21, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're up here, you, we have this device right here that he's holding. It's a tool that will let us hear your voice. Who, who were you defending this, uh, this fort and the nation from? Sorry to have to disturb your peace. We just want to ask you some questions. We're coming with good energy. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to be disturbed. That's what it's looking like. Get, get out of here. I'm at peace. Because wasn't this like the like like the top rank? This is the top. Yeah. Ranking officer's quarters was right here and like no one was allowed to come in he's here. like you're not allowed to like mess with me right now like yeah and this is yeah, kind of like my yeah it's very interesting actually is that what you're saying to us that you want us to you want us to leave if you want us to get out of this room Right now, head up, say what you want, use your voice, walk up to any of these little tools that we have right here. And we'll actually leave and go to a different part of the fort. Oliver. I was just thinking, I was gonna ask, what's your name? Was Oliver your name? Oh, 
Oh, oh, I didn't even notice that that went off. It's on the wall. It's like, it's not bright over there. What's going on? Oh, there it goes off again. Oliver. Is that you with us right now? Maybe Sergeant Oliver? <gasps> what the fuck? Did you hear a, I heard like a bang over there, did you? Yeah. Okay, mag light went off. Oh, God. Oliver, so it seems like we're talking to someone named Oliver. Can you step away from us? We'll get out of your hair. It seems like you want us to uh, let you sleep. Yeah, he stepped away from there. I know that this is a very respected place in the fort. It seems like you're very powerful. You have a lot of energy. Can you just step away from our voices or maybe go to the kitchen? We'll leave if you, if you leave us alone. I'm sorry to disturb you. That's a strong hit. I mean, it's so strong that it's just leaving it. It's like he's like standing right there. walked away and the mag light too okay Oliver do you yeah. have right when I said Oliver we really appreciate you making contact with us Oliver could you no. pop now dude it's like he said like get out of here now because we said we'd get out Oh. You don't want us in here? Dude, I think they're actually mad that we're in here. I mean, that's what it looks like. So this makes perfect sense. The type of activity that we're seeing right now, it's literally, it's such a strong signal. Look at that right there. And the mag light over here, the flashlight, the energy that's coming up to this area, it said it can't come up here and it won't. It's, sorry, there's an airplane above us, but it really is like a commander at a fort saying, get out. This is my commander's quarters. This is like the most private area in this entire complex. And it's like he's really telling us that like we should get out. Is that what you want? You want us to get out of this building? Dude, that's, that's a lot of energy, dude, for both of these. I mean, look at this thing, it's just... Oh, I feel cold, dude. Do you actually? I feel freezing right now. Like, it's like right here. Almost just came in, once again, to this area. If you want us to leave, can you make a knocking noise like this? Oliver. <laughs> Dude, those were loud as hell. And now it's completely quiet. That came from over here. This area. Like on the window with the, the boarded window. What the f <laughs> All right, Oliver. And, and he says all is well too. So he's not mad that we were here. He doesn't want us to... Navy! This is a naval base. Yes. What the f***? 
And he was a commander of like the naval yeah. forces around here. Like, it's almost like he's like, <laughs> you're in the Navy, like get out of here, yeah. you're good, but just leave, let me sleep. Okay, so Oliver, I think we're actually gonna get out of here and let you, uh, let you rest. We've got a lot to uh, explore here at the fort. Thank you for coming to talk to us though. You've actually been really nice to talk to and I'm sorry we disturbed your rest. We're gonna move on now though and, and respect you, okay? Let's get it going. This is, this is a lot of evidence. And he's walked up right there, bro. Did you get that? For like a split second, he walked up. Thank you, Oliver. It was great talking to you. All right, y'all, so we're gonna leave Oliver alone. That seems like the respectful thing to do in this case because the spirit is actually asking us to leave. We don't wanna cause any harm or discomfort to these entities, these people. You know, that's what it boils down to is people. But we're gonna do an experiment now to start But we're gonna do an experiment, and Connor and I are gonna do two solo sessions here at the fort, yeah. wearing something special. We get to dress up for you guys. Hope you're ready. Yep, we got a lot of costumes <laughs> for tonight, but part really one, do. I think let's do it. Home. This is his house. This is Oliver's house, dude. <laughs> Oliver, yeah, we're gonna leave your home. Thank you, my friend. <gasps> Are you happy that we're leaving, Oliver? It looks like it. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Okay, let's back up. All right. All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have period costumes right now. I'm dressed kind of as a general. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> We ordered these off of Amazon. I didn't know what they would look like, obviously. It's uh, it's an interesting look with the powdered wigs, you know. The red coats are coming. <laughs> Let's whip over here. Look at this guy. He's, he's looking sharp. He looks like he's about to go sign a declaration. <laughs> 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 but, oh, this wig. We're gonna use these costumes as trigger objects while we go film our next sessions, which are, <laughs> we're gonna be alone. <laughs> Yo, look at the hair. Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't do too well <laughs> with this one. Check me out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is just too funny, but we're gonna take this seriously. So Connor is now gonna go to the area where they stored all the gunpowder and weaponry right over there. They think that there might be bodies buried in that wall right at the end of that cavern, whatever you'd call that storage room. Yeah. Then I'm gonna go at the same time to the officer's quarters where if you'll remember, Elizabeth is supposedly haunting the area and that's where the screaming lady has been seen and heard. So this is like scary, but we're flexing right now with our costumes. <laughs> Catch me in the 1700s, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I'm telling you, you look, you look fly, man. You should wear this out one night. Yo, hit the green. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we're gonna go now. Like this. <laughs> oh, shit. I was so good. All right, okay, okay. Let's All right. Go. All right, guys. <laughs> So, me and Colin have separated. The music box just went off. There is still airplanes flying above here, so if you hear any loud noises like that, it's the airplanes. So, I'm here in the powder storage room. This is where they used to store all of the gunpowder uh, that they had. And Apparently, this is one of the most haunted locations on this property. So, of course, me and Colin decide to dress up real fancy. 
do a little separate paranormal investigation. All right. Hello, everyone. My name's Connor. I'm here to make contact with you tonight. I just want to have conversation. So anyone that's here with me right now, I would love to talk to you. We have a spirit talker tonight. I have a REM pod set up over here. And then I have a mag light as well, right here. And then we have the music box set up over in the corner. All right, if there's anybody here with me right now, and you want to make contact, you want to talk to me, can you walk over to any of these lights that you see in this room? Are you walking in the hallway right now? If there's anybody here with me right now, can you make a noise to let me know that you're here? Don't be afraid to come in here. I would love to talk to you tonight. Yeah, come on in here. Now, I'm not afraid. I'm friendly. Okay, Elizabeth, if you're in here, make your presence known. That's her voice. Make your presence known. Elizabeth, I've got devices, tools here. All you have to do is touch this thing, touch this thing, or speak your voice and we can hear you. I am a patriot. I want to fight for America. Are you? Are you? Right when I said fight. Argue about what, Elizabeth? Draining. Draining. I agree, war can be draining. I'm so sorry. Can you use your voice and speak with me? Okay, I'm gonna stop the accent, Elizabeth, and just talk to you. Is there somebody here with me? Can you go up to the fireplace to let me know you're here? I'm still around. You're still around. If you could please just tell me your name or who you are. I'd love to talk. I heard you died a pretty Pretty sad death. Was it yellow fever that took your life? Whoever's in here? You could say yes, go touch one of these little boxes that I have set up. Tell me your name. I'm gonna go walk over here for a second. Elizabeth. Are you in this room? Oh.
Elizabeth? So you are in this room? Some. Someone is? But who's here in this room? Can you tell me who? I'd love to hear your name, Elizabeth. I don't mean to scare you with my costume. Glass. Caught industry. Beware. Glass, beware. Burial. Burial. Oh, you know what? I think I might be thinking that I'm talking to the wrong person. Maybe I'm talking to Connor's spirit that's over there or somebody who's buried back there in the wall. Were you buried back there in the wall? Can you say yes or no or go touch one of the little things in front of me? Above the fireplace? Really makes me wonder what Connor's up to right now. Do you want me to come into the hallway? If... Ooh. I can come into the hallway with you. Is this where you want me to come? Who are you? How about you come in here with me? Come on in the room. What the hell? Hello? Big. Need time. Need time. Were you from the Revolutionary War? Okay, I can stay. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave soon if you don't talk to me. Oh, my battery's about to die on this camera. I don't know if you can see that battery light up top. Just all of a sudden. Earth. Are you buried in the earth over there? Can you tell me your name or something about you? Incident. Incident. So you had an incident. Is that what happened? I don't know why I keep going in and out of my accent. <laughs> I don't know. What was the incident? Clear memory. So you have a clear memory of the incident. Revoked. What was revoked?
Let me just ask you, you're saying your memory's clear, there was some incident. If you're buried behind the bunker, did you die a natural death? No, I didn't. <sighs> okay, well that seems to say that there may be a body, yes, but- it's me. Yes, it's me, a body. I just said that. It's almost like there's a body buried back there of somebody who died in some sort of incident that people don't know about, but they remember it, like clear memory. You're, you're revoked, something like that. How did you die? Can you tell me how you died? Seek. Okay, towards, seek, and mend. Well, hopefully we can help you mend some stuff. We are seeking answers, if that's what you're saying. If you're a soldier, can you come into this powder room right now? Like I said, we're friendly. You don't have to be afraid of us. What the f***? The music box is going off again. This is freaky. And I feel ridiculous because I'm wearing this costume. Even though it does look so good on me. Is there any soldiers here with me right now? If there's any soldiers in here, I need you to fall into formation. Come in here. We have a serious meeting. What the f is that sound? What the f Hello? Damage. Damage. I know there was a lot of damage done to this fort by the British. If you're upset by that, can you come into this room? Earl. Earl. Earl, are you here with me right now? If that was... Oh. Okay, if that was you... And you were killed. You just said something's Five wrong. Sense Farm. Sense. Drone. Okay, I think you're here with me now, finally. Were you murdered? <gasps> Rebecca? Yeah. Dad? Rebecca? Aura? <gasps> Can you step away from the fireplace for a second and turn that light off? Just step all the way away. Man. Man. Nickel. I, Nickel.
Okay, cool. Move. Man, Don't. move. The grave. The grave, right when I was flipping that around. The grave. So that might be the person, one thing about your life. Kill. Is that what you're trying to tell me? That you're buried somewhere here in a grave? Flash. Yeah, that thing was flashing pretty bright. Okay, y'all, it's been about 30 minutes. You know, I've had some decent responses in here. I'm gonna have to cut this down for time because there was periods of five, 10 minutes where none of the devices were going off, nothing. But I'm gonna go grab Connor because we're running out of time here at the fort. So I'm gonna go pick him up now. Thank you, Elizabeth. If that was you that I was talking to. Lost sense past. Oh, and the light just flickered big time. Whoever's here, this is your last chance to tell something to me. What's your name or what happened to you? Last chance. Oh. Let me rest. Let me dirty reap. Let me rest. Man, and the flashlight. It's like these things are very present and they keep setting off devices, letting us know that their energy is here. But it's almost like they don't wanna like communicate. They just want us to let them rest at this point. So thank you to whoever's here. I'm going to let you rest and I'm gonna leave the building now, okay? Thank you. Are you a British soldier? If you're an American soldier, I want you to know that I'm thankful for the service that you gave this country. Thanks. Thanks. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm super, super thankful for the service that you gave for this country. Standing up for what you believed in. I'm seeing orbs everywhere. Flying across the screen. I'm getting chills. I don't know if you can see. Pay attention. I'm paying attention to you. What do you have to say? All right, well, it's getting late. We have other places to do an investigation at in here. So I think we're gonna cut it right now. Yeah. If there's anything else you wanna say to us, you can follow us to the next location. I appreciate you coming and talking to me. Table. All right. Thanks for talking. All right, I'm going to pick up Connor now. Dude, where is the time going? I know. It's 11.30. That's what I'm saying. This was going off like crazy. Really? Like a minute long. And then it would stop? Yeah. Okay, so right now we are in supposedly the most haunted part of the entire fort, the castmate. Specifically, this is castmate three. This is where the political prisoners were kept captive. And uh, lots of people have seen shadow figures, heard screaming, moaning. The energy in this area is just bad. Yes, a lot of these people were in prison, but also uh, the conditions here were just deplorable. So, 
got some REM pods set up. We've got a spirit talker running. And we're gonna try an experiment right now. We have a speaker set up, and I'm gonna see if we can get any of the spirits around here to respond to the sounds of a revolutionary war battle. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is a British song from the Revolutionary War that we're trying to use as a trigger object. So we're gonna play it right now, see what happens. think it likes that song. No, that worked. To bring them in here, because that... Come in here if you're standing in there. We'll talk to you if you walk into this room. Okay, another experiment that I had planned was to use the speaker to play. Jacob! Isn't that the one that he was talking about in the interview? Yes. Jacob, dude. There is a spirit that identifies in here as he calls himself the judge. Now the judge does use foul language. He drops the F-bomb. He calls women and whores. Um, from Clearfield, there was a sitting judge that was imprisoned in here. Prison judge Jacob Wilhelm. I don't... <sighs> I'm trying to figure out if it's the judge that identifies himself as actually Jacob Wilhelm or just a, a, a spirit that is the alpha spirit that just says he's the judge. Play. Jacob! Isn't that the one that he was talking about in the interview? Yes. Jacob, dude. The judge Jacob? I believe so. Jacob! We heard there's a judge that hangs out in this room. I'm listening to you. So this is the judge that I'm talking to. Okay, the second experiment that I had planned was to play the sounds of a revolutionary war battle since this building sustained so many cannonballs and, you know, hits. Hundreds of soldiers died. That's crazy. Okay, since you're here, does this sound remind you of anything?
1600. Did those noises bring you back to the war? You can see my breath too. They're in here now. How is that possible? That just smells like just did. Yeah, I think I forgot it. Hurting. Hurting. Hello? If you're down here, can you make a really no a really loud noise for us? Talk. Talk. Yeah, I'd love to hear you talk. You want to talk? We're just dudes like you guys. We don't like the war either. Did that thing say pain before? Hurry. Think of all the suffering down here. Were you hurting down here? Is that what you're trying to tell us? <gasps> what the fuck? Thank you. I think it seems to be somebody who's in that bunk right there. Right? Run now. Run now. It's almost like the military, like, run now. Run, run, run now! Well, I mean, that's what anybody that was in this room was running from the war. They didn't want to true, fight in the war. True, political prisoners. They sympathize with the other side. That's just nuts, bro. Is hey, the judge in here with us? Whoever's here, I'm gonna turn this off. Did you try to run away from the war? Is this the judge? We're gonna have to leave this area soon because unfortunately we just don't have that much time. What was it like getting shot at? Can you tell us what it was like getting shot at by the British? Was it scary? Or were you from the American Civil War? We heard a lot of people that were kept down here were executed. 
for not wanting to fight in the war. If that was you, can you make a loud noise? True. True. Alright, so we bought this. I tried to get a fife, like a drum and fife, but I bought this recorder, which is very close to what a fife would sound like. And I wanted to play some sort of revolution. Suddenly. Suddenly. Some sort of revolutionary war jingle. So, I'm gonna try right now. How did you feel before you died? Afraid. Sorry that happened to you. Maybe I can help you feel better. Suddenly and afraid. I'm gonna try to help you guys with a little song, all right? Is that right? Let me rest. Let me rest. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anybody? Did you enjoy that? It's ghost time instead of snake. Caves. Caves? That's interesting because these are caves. Caves. Man, it's good taste. It's good taste. <laughs> <laughs> that one was for you, Judge. Silent. I don't feel that. For a second there, it felt really heavy. Yeah. But and we've been sitting here like 30, 40 man. minutes, and now it's like dead. Yeah. I guess I scared him away with this. Sorry, guys, I know I'm not the best fifer. How about? All right, well, I think we should finish it out in the. The new attack. Leaves. attack! The fucking attack, dude! Alright, here we go. I ain't been down here yet. This is it. Wow. So, to finish out our night here, we don't have a very long time frame. We did the interview, so that obviously cuts into our investigation time, but we're finishing out down here in the newest, or I should say the most the like, most recently discovered area here in the fort. These were tunnels that people, the, the people who run this fort didn't know existed until a couple, I think a decade and a half ago. And they discovered handwriting on the walls and found out that this was a prison area where the prisoner William, he actually was in prison before he was executed here at Fort Mifflin, so. They actually found out about this place because one of the groundskeepers uh, we're walking around up on this uh, magazine, what they call it, uh, and he actually fell through into the little stairwell area over there. And so that's how they actually found out about this place. They didn't know it was here. So that's why we're going to do a DR60. We have a spirit talker right here, but the volume's off, so we're not going to actually hear the responses. We're just going to see them. To William or any other prisoner that may be down here. All we want to do is talk to you and figure out what happened to you. So just use your voice and tell us your story. So William, are you here with us?
Were you evading the war? Killer. It is a killer. He murdered someone, apparently. Or maybe he's saying they think he's a killer. William, did you actually kill that man? How did you die? Is there anything you want to tell us about that happened to you? Why were you running from the war? Is there something that you want to tell us that we can share with the people in the city or the people that run this fort about your story? Are you out there in the hallway? Okay, we're gonna listen. You can come into the room with us. What the hell? Right when we stopped recording the thing and asking questions. There's someone standing like right in front of you. Yeah, there's someone right here. Can you step away from that thing so we can listen to your voice? Why don't you shut that off so we can do the DR60? Literally the moment that we got done with the DR60 Seriously? session. It started going off. I was about to click play. Okay, let's listen. It sounded like he definitely said, yes, he's here, and no, he didn't kill the person. Didn't it? That's exactly what I was thinking. That's so weird. Many deaths, negative, go left, mental, boat, group, killer. You want to ask one more question? Yeah. Then we can be done. Okay. Can you say your name, William? Are you stuck here?
Can you make a noise and let us know where you are down here? I heard you have the power to throw rocks. Could you throw a rock for us? If you're down here with us, can you make a noise? Honestly, William, did you kill that man? How many people are down here? Do you have any final words? But honestly, guys, we've already gone 30 minutes over our allotted time. We had to call the uh, the management of this place to let them have or to let to have them let us have or to let us have more time here in the fort. So, unfortunately, or yeah, unfortunately, we have to get going tonight. But. This has been a crazy night, dude. We have a lot of stuff. And uh, even though it's not poltergeisty stuff, there's still energy here, man. There's still there's something you can feel. Energy. Yeah. You can feel it, dude. I mean, it's it's like a tangible energy that's kind of just like surrounding this place. And there are tons of history, too. The most history. Honestly. That we've been to in a long time. Yeah. Uh, from Connor and I. We're here, we're tired. It's almost 1 a.m. and we we're supposed to be done at noon. Or noon? We we're supposed to be done at midnight, so we're gonna pack our stuff up and get the hell out of here, I think. Thank you, William. Thank you, William. And to anyone else who talked to us tonight, thank you. And sayonara. <laughs> okay. So to end today's episode, we're here in Washington Square Park. This is just a stone's throw away from Independence Hall. And if you just were to look at this area, you would think it was just a park in a city. You know, just a bunch of grass, benches, people walking their dogs, hanging out. But what people don't know is that there are estimated to be 2,000 Revolutionary War soldiers buried in this area. And all of them are unknown. They don't know the names of who's buried here. I'm assuming that some of the men who died at Fort Mifflin are buried here because they started these burials in 1777 when Fort Mifflin was being attacked. And this memorial right here, we got George Washington and then an eternal flame. Um, this symbolizes that this park is a burial ground. It says even right there, in unmarked graves within this square lie thousands of unknown soldiers. So. We wanted to come pay our respects. We brought some nice white flowers. 
Since there's no real grave to place them on, except for this, this is actually a tomb of an unknown soldier. I'm just gonna lay these flowers right here. If you came and talked to us at the fort, thank you. And I hope you found peace, if you're still around here. It's crazy though. When you come walk around, how this does not seem at all like a burial ground, and there are literally thousands of bodies here. Connor, what do you think? I mean, it's a beautiful park. So, I mean, it's good to see that from all the terrible things that happen, deaths, that they get to be buried in a beautiful place like this. And even though we don't know their names, that we can still dedicate a piece of land like this to the people who fought for America's freedom. Without these people, America wouldn't be here. We'd still be paying sugar tax. If you did come talk to us last night, and we want to say thank you for everything you did for us. What you gave up didn't go unnoticed, and we're thankful to this day. We're always thankful and respectful towards veterans of this country. So if you're out there watching and you've served in the military and all of that, thank you for your service. Thank you for what you've done to help make America the country that it is. A country that has its problems, but at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And this is an important piece of history, I think, to acknowledge that without the sacrifice these people made, we wouldn't be here. Neither would the city, neither would the fort. And yeah, life would be a lot different. Thank you all for watching. We have some incredible new videos coming up soon. I hope you enjoyed. This is our first episode here in Philadelphia. We've lived here eight months, yeah. seven months. So cool history you'd never get to see if you weren't here in the city. Shout out to you, Mr. G-Dub. Shout out G-W. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. That's it.